since Chris Hani was assassinated outside his home in Boxbeck, east of Johannesburg. To commemorate this historic period of our history, a number of events have been planned to honor and celebrate his life. At the time of his assassination on the 10th of April in 1993, Hani was the general secretary of the SACP and a member of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress. To talk to us more about his life and times and the activities planned to honor his life, we now joined in studio by Chris Matlaku. Chris is the SACP's second deputy general secretary. Dr. Matlaku, good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, very you so much, much indeed. Mm -hmm. Now, um, yesterday marked uh, 100 days, of course, a countdown to Nelson Mandela's centenary celebrations. And we do know that the country is currently mourning the passing of Mam Winnie Matikizala Mandela. I would imagine these are historic events for us here um, in South Africa and for the SACP as uh, their alliance partner. Well, indeed. Um, <clears throat> as we're pointing out um, in our statements, it's very important for us to... Uh, create a repository of, of, of this legacy, of this uh, important institution of our revolution. Um, so among other things that we think we should be doing uh, is not only of writing of books and etc., but also to create a popular history so that all of us in South Africa are able to draw very important lessons from the lives and times of all of these other important uh, mm. people that contributed to, to where we are today. Yeah, specifically, let's talk about uh, Mamouini. What do you think should be... Uh, what lessons should be drawn from her life? Well, uh, she was a very important uh, person, particularly as a woman, mm. but also a woman who spent a lot of time uh, alone where her husband was uh, imprisoned. Uh, so she went through a whole range of things. Uh, she was also a target uh, of the apartheid uh, police uh, and many other things. Um, but the, I think the very important thing about her is that her resilience Okay. Uh, and steadfastness in confronting uh, the apartheid regime and confronting uh, all of these things that are meant to break both the spirit and the body. Uh, she managed to emerge out of those things very strong. Yeah, and many uh, people saying that she was not celebrated enough here as at home. The government never sort of took into consideration in some instances. W what's your take as the SEC? That's why we need to create the popular history that I'm talking about so that we're able to uh, provide this to all of our people in the country so that they are able to embrace uh, the positives that their lives have been for us. For women, I think uh, we know to represent an important uh, um, uh, institution and icon. Yeah. Now, back to Chris Honey's, of course, commemorations, as I said on my introduction, that today marks uh, 25 years uh, since his assassination. L let's talk about his leadership qualities. I mean, there were concerns the previous years about uh, the leadership qualities that South Africa has. When you look back to who and what Chris Hardy was in terms of leadership, how would you talk to us about his qualities? Well, uh, I think many people also don't know that Chris assumed uh, important leadership positions at a very young age uh, in his life. Uh, for example, uh, even when he joined MK, he was a young person uh, who joined MK and rose in the ranks of uh, Mkonto Wesizu. Uh, but also in the ranks of the South African Communist Party. Uh, in his early 30s, he was already Assistant General Secretary of the party. Um, and that's, 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 a, that's an important aspect about mm -hmm. him. Uh, the fact that um, a, a person who comes from uh, some rural place uh, in the former Transkei areas and etc. was able to make this kind of contribution is very, is very telling. Yeah, yeah. And, and at the time of his assassination, he was uh, the general secretary of the SACP and, of course, uh, the, a member of the National Executive Committee of, of, of the ANC. How would you describe the current relationship between the SACP and the ANC? We do know that previously the relationship was very much strained. Are you hopeful? Does it look better now? If, if, if the indications that we're getting uh, are anything to go by, we think uh, the relationship is mending. Um, but of course, we would want to see more mm. uh, intangible ways of uh, this relationship. But also, there's a responsibility on the both, of, uh, the both organizations. Uh, historically, the party has made its contribution and continues to do that. Mm. Uh, but also that the ANC is making its own contribution in different ways. Uh, so what it requires is the leadership of both of these organizations to understand and comprehend the challenges that confront us today mm. uh, and narrow the gap that has existed in the past. Uh, and part of what we need to be doing is that uh, to embrace, uh, we want to argue, the new leadership of the African National Congress that was elected at the 54th uh, National Conference that was held in NASRAC mm. uh, and the articulations that are making today 
uh, including the fact that we need to fight uh, corporate capture, yeah. corruption, and all of those things that the party has mm -hmm. been articulating that we've been saying uh, have been the obstacles and have denuded and derided uh, our democratic uh, dispensation um, 20 odd years into, into, into the new South Africa. And part of your concerns previously in the Dematak was that uh, the ANC-led government was not in constant consultation with the SACP. So are, you in con are they in consultation with the SACP currently? I can report that yeah. we have recently had a secretariat alliance okay. uh, and we are working as the uh, secretariat to uh, move towards a political council where our leadership will come together and articulate the positions. Uh, so there's convergence. Mm. Uh, I'm very hopeful. But it looks like you, you're still not happy with certain things. I mean, we, we saw Ndatema Paylor over the weekend coming out to say, look, if the ANC is, is to use uh, the former president, Jacob Zuma, uh, during his election campaigns, the SACP will not campaign for the ANC. So you're still not happy with certain things. Of course, there are a couple of things that um, you know, we want to point out to the African National Congress. Uh, which could muddy our relationship, which could uh, possibly pre present themselves as uh, obstacles for us moving forward. Uh, but we're looking forward to the political council where we can articulate all of these things um, comprehensively. For example, we're talking about a reconfigured alliance. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to share our perspectives with the African National Congress, but also how we go into the next set of elections that are going to be held mm -hmm. next year. What is it that we need to be doing to close the gap, but also to work as these two organizations, including COSATU and SANCO, mm. uh, in taking forward the ideals and the objectives that... But uh, do you think it's, it's, it's a little bit... Do you not think it's a little bit unfair for uh, the former president? I mean, we do have former presidents, of course, taking part in the activities of the ANC. So why would you not want the specific one to, to partake in the ANC's activities? Well, um, we're not saying he shouldn't. He's a member of the African National Congress. He's mm -hmm. a, like any other person, uh, he has duties and responsibilities. But the, the SACP is saying that if yeah. he's part of the election campaigns, they will not be campaigning for the ANC. Because there are a couple of things that we have problems with. And those things we want to discuss mm -hmm. with the ANC okay. so that we are able uh, to take them off the table. All right. Let, let's quickly talk about the events planned to celebrate and honor the life of Under de Crisani. Well, there's a major event that is going to take place at the gravesite of uh, uh, Comrade Chris, um, which will be addressed by the Alliance leadership, uh, but also a keynote address will be given uh, by the General Secretary of the Party. Uh, but also that uh, there are other international events that are taking place. For example, in Poland, mm -hmm. uh, our counterparts are also marking this particular day. Uh, because we think it's important to make those linkages. Uh, because the killing of Chris Hain was not just a South African issue, uh, it, ho it had uh, world implications and ramifications. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that uh, uh, some foreign national uh, would take up uh, a gun and shoot uh, yeah. a communist mm -hmm. is an issue. Um, yeah. And therefore, for, for South Africa and the democratization process in South Africa, it's important for us to stand up for the correct ideals uh, so that we do not allow space for the persecution yeah. of peoples who hold different views, whether communist, whether religious, they shouldn't be persecuted, they shouldn't be killed. All right. Tata Matlako, time constraints. We have to leave it at that. Thank you so much and all the best with the planned activities. Thank you very much. Thank you so much Thank to you. Chris Matlaku, SACP Second Deputy General Secretary, talking to us about the 25th anniversary of the SACP leader Chris Hani's assassination. We're taking a quick... Uh,